Hi, this is Bob Papa, voice of the New York football giants. And this is the Big Blue UK and Ireland podcast. Good evening, welcome back Giants fans to the latest edition of the Big Blue UK and Ireland podcast as always in association with Andy's Man Club. Remember lads, it is okay to talk. As you can see this week we are 75% British, 25% Irish, but as always absolutely 100% in Giants. Craig's doing a bit of rearranging the furniture there at the moment so uh, we'll let him get on with that. But we're back live following our plethora of guest interviews that we've had over the last week. Um you know, with the draft only two weeks away now as well, we hope to have many more interviews coming your way over the next few weeks and months. But tonight it's time to get mocky Giants fans as we bring you our first mocks of the year with a couple of free rounders coming later this evening. Uh, plus Shane and Kev will also be highlighting some names to look out for on days two and three of the draft. So make sure you stay tuned for that, lads. How are we doing on this fine Tuesday evening? Yeah, not bad. Uh, like I say, you know, we had some uh, amazing guests on last week. Um, I'm sure our listeners have already listened to those episodes, but if you're not, I highly recommend going back to listen to them. Um, they were absolutely amazing. Um, two two great Jordans to get on the show. Um, and like I say, I'm you know, looking forward to getting into sort of some day two and day three prospects as well. Um, I've, I've not seen Kev's. I'm guessing Kev's not seen mine either. Um, so it'll be, uh, be interesting. It will be. I definitely think that there'll be one or two uh that we might have to see him um or um there'll definitely be players that i'll mention that you might have just missed your list or you'll mention that might have just missed mine but just exactly what you were saying lads you know having the two jordans on last week just banging out the draft content it's just so good you know um we're two weeks away now you know it's two weeks thursday so we have first round of the 2024 nfl draft and we will be in the war room together for a full live show for the whole first round Lads, I don't know about you, I was a little bit nervous when we decided to do that, but I'm absolutely buzzing now that it's getting closer and closer, and I feel that all the prep we've done, uh, we're not quite finished yet, but all the prep that we've done and we're doing, I think uh, we're going to be really, really ready for it, and it's going to be a great, great night, and uh, I'm just so glad the four of us are back on, and uh, you know, this is the time of year the Giants can be hopeful uh, for a change. <laughs> as opposed to being a negative. Um, apologies for all the carnage as soon as we went live. My back, my laptop went, your battery's running low. And I realised I hadn't actually plugged the power in. So that would have uh, been a good start, wouldn't it? Um, but yeah, it's been a chaotic one. But um, yeah, what a week. And as you said, getting closer and closer. And finally, we get to do a Big Blue UK and Ireland mock draft. We absolutely do. Um, but yeah, I just want a big shout out to the, the Jordans, both um, Reed and Delugo, for coming on last week. There was a, I did listen to both episodes. I wasn't on, unfortunately, due to work, but I did listen to both, and they were cracking listens. So if you haven't already, make sure you tune in and listen to those at a later date. But yeah, good to get back on. Obviously, yeah, two weeks to the draft. It's ramping up. It's going to be a a great fortnight, a busy fortnight, and really looking forward to two weeks on Thursday. So we've got a lot to look forward to over the next few weeks. But as usual, let us know your thoughts uh, and questions, comments. Drop them in the comments, um, and we'll do our best to get any questions you want answering answered. Um, and check out all our social platforms and merch store by following the links in the description. And feel free to like and share if you're watching. Uh, to kick off this week, as usual, it's our roundup of the latest news and rumours. Uh, producer Craig, I'm coming to you first this week. What's the latest on Big Blue's latest rapper? <laughs> yeah, not a lot. Um, the news that Darren Waller is considering retirement has rumbled on since the news broke during the Combine at the end of Feb. Um, with the draft now only two weeks away, the Giants' brass is none the wiser to Waller's plans for 2024, and it doesn't look like he really knows either. Um, last week, Forbes released an article featuring a one-on-one -on -one interview that they had with Darren, and there were some interesting things in that article of note that I've jotted down here. So one is that the author, DJ Siddiqui, um, spoke to Waller and said that he was in as good shape as ever when he saw him. Um, he was doing route running and working out in Vegas with two draft prospects in Ohio State's Cade Stover and Texas's Jatavian Sanders. 
the biggest quote though and you know the one to kind of keep an eye on was I'm at the point now where I'm okay how much am I willing to give to the process if it's not 100% it's a disservice to the teammates in the organization that I have I'm still trying to make a decision on that and it's a tough one to make one or the other out of emotion now there was also an uh, athletic article that went up today where they kind of there was a push about whether he was going to make that decision before the draft and he said that he would like to but you know emotion doesn't really dictate when and where he can make it um you know he ideally he'd like to do it before the draft but (laughs) there we go um but another week and we're talking about you know the the lack of decision making from from darren if you're the giants are you tempted to draft a tight end even though we've signed stole man hurts and re-signed cager dan I mean, that sounded like a, a company name that did stole man hurts and cager. It does, it doesn't like it? a law, sound like a law firm or something. Um, I don't think so. I don't know. I don't think so. Um, obviously, as it stands, we've only got six picks in the draft this year. Um, and surely there's six positions where we have a bigger need to, to get someone than, than, than tight end. Obviously, Bellinger can step up and be that number one, like he showed. Well, he could potentially step up and be that number one, like he showed in his rookie year. Um, obviously, after his injury, there were a few concerns about him, but I, I think given the chance, he can he could he could produce again. And you then obviously got Cager and the other two, Stowell and Manhurts. You know, whether they form a, like a sort of a little committee to sort of rotate between them, or obviously, or is Cager's number two, the other two falling behind. We could pick up, you know, any undrafted free agents. We could also then look at, you know, especially when it comes to camp and the final cutdowns, any sort of um, free agents that come out after camp that we can pick up. So there's there's lots of still moving pieces that can still happen in terms of tight ends. So I think even if Waller doesn't come back and if he does decide to retire, I, I don't I don't see us going tight end in the draft. Um, if it doesn't work out, there's always, you know, into going into the season as well, if it doesn't work out, there's always the option of potentially a, an in-season trade, which, you know, before the trade deadline. So there's there's lots of options and choices out there. So I don't think drafting the tight end is, is the right way at the moment, whilst he's still sort of on the fence. If he comes out and says he's going to retire in the next fortnight, then, all right, it might be deemed as a more of a position of need. But until then, I think, no. Kev, what's your thoughts on the whole Waller situation at the moment? Yeah, it's it's it's, it's very tricky, isn't it? Because is is he doing the right thing and saying he wants to be a hundred percent to come back? So that means if he does make the decision to come back, is he all in, or is it a case if you're thinking about retired to re- to retirement, are you already retired? Do you know what I mean it's kind of like you know it's that catch twenty two situation? I mean, um, we'd like to have him back because he can be uh, a good player in this league. He showed last year that although his form did dip a bit before uh, struggling with injuries, that he that he was you know a good player when called upon. So you, you'd kind of rather have them than not. Um, I believe I'm not very happy about dragging it out though. I think it should be uh, decided on well before the draft, and I think that's a little bit selfish on his part. Um, I think we were going to look at tight end anyway in this draft, um, especially day three. Maybe not with the top tier picks, but definitely day three. There's a there's no one really that stands out at the beginning of the draft apart from Brock Bowers. But later on in the draft, there's definitely value to be had. Uh, but Dan made a great point as well of us only having six picks. So you know it's not a case of like we've got lots of darts to throw at like all positions. So we kind of do have to be a little bit selective. But I mean, I hope they take the best player on the board when it comes to the day three picks. If that happens to be a tight end, fantastic. Um, I think Bellinger can do a job uh, as, as a number one tight end. I think we might have to go into the free agent market post-draft to pick up another body because uh, I don't really see a number two on the roster right now. I see a lot of uh, depth for run blocking, um, but I don't see um, a real number two. I don't think Cager could be a real number two. Uh, I think he's more of a camp body, but um, part of me would like just Waller to make the decision now, free up to 6.7 million it would, and let us go and put that money towards a, a starting position like a cornerback or safety. Looks like Steve's obviously showing his hand quite early before the Big Blue UK and Ireland fantasy draft later on uh, this off season. Um, Shane, thoughts on on Waller? Do you do you feel like because of that lack of 
draft picks, it does make it a bit more of a difficult decision for the Giants? Um, not really, to be honest with you. I mean, Joe Shane showed in the past that he's, he's happy to be aggressive and, and move up in the draft. And likewise, he's happy to uh, drop back down in the draft and acquire extra extra uh, draft capital. And that's fully what I expect him to do this year, to be honest. Um, only having six picks. I wouldn't be surprised if we trade back in the second round, to be fair. You've got the likes of Cincinnati and uh, Arizona that have got two or three picks in rounds two and three. So ideally trading with uh, with one of those would be ideal. Um, and, you know, you want to get the value. So I'll throw in, like, say, an extra fifth rounder and then you can use that fifth rounder to get a, a tight end. Um, I think you definitely need to get something if if Darren Waller's going to um, not be part of this team going forward. Um I think he kind of owes it to us a little bit to at least tell us before the draft, in all fairness. I, I, I don't think it's great the way it's been prolonged the way that it is. Um, and, you know, with his comments, I'd suggest that he's more than likely out than he is in. So, Dan, back over to you for a re-siding. Yeah, man, sorry, I was taking myself off mute. Um, and my mouse didn't want to work. Um, yeah, re-siding, which kind of... I mean, came a little bit out of nowhere for me. I sort of wasn't expecting it to happen, but yeah. Um, Isaiah Simmons, um, obviously linebacker slash safety, um, who we originally acquired in uh, last year from the Cardinals in exchange for this year's seventh round pick. Um, David, I think it's um, he appeared in all 17 games last season and recorded 50 tackles, two tackles for loss, one sack, three pass breakups, uh, one force fumble, and that 54-yard pick six against Washington. So, yeah, Isaiah Simmons is back in the building. Quick reaction to that, Kev? The Isaiah Simmons one, I think, is a, is a great um, a great sign in the sense that it's a one-year deal, two million, uh, two million for one year with 1.4 guaranteed. I think it's one of those deals where it's like a, a a nice. It's more than the bet minimum, so you're showing like a bit of commitment to him with the guaranteed money. Um, and he's a player that has great promise. I mean, we traded a seventh round pick for him last year. He hasn't lived up to his uh, round one billing, but he hasn't found a home. And even we we hoped Wink would use him the right way last year. And I think Shane might have said in the previous podcast, like try to use him as a rusher off the edge on on, on obvious passing downs and stuff, and use that athleticism. Um, but maybe he 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 maybe he's better as a box safety as an overhang uh, linebacker. I mean, uh, Bowen has to like him, otherwise he wouldn't have been signed. And um, so it'll be interesting to see how he's used. I mean, that type of athleticism, and he's only just turned twenty six. So, you know, I think it's a great idea to bring him back for another one-year deal and see what he can do in Bowen's um, defence. Yeah, I think it's a... In, in my in my eyes, he, he, was a, um, he was a, you know, sort of utility player. I mean, he sort of came in handy sort of in, in lots of different situations. So, for me, I think it was a good pick-up. Shane, what do you reckon? Yeah, you know, like Kev says, he's not he's not lived up to that rain one potential. Um, it's not overly expensive and... You know, it'd be interesting to see how he's utilised because I've, um, I've mentioned in the past he can be used off the edge, but also, you know, let's not forget we've mentioned it over the last couple of weeks. I think last week we were talking about linebackers in the draft and, you know, our linebacker depth isn't great at the moment. So, you know, he could be used there. And again, let's not forget he was also used as safety in um, in Arizona a few times, which I know he wasn't a fan of, but it just gives you that other, other option. Um, so, you know, I just see him as a little bit of a, a depth piece and it'll be interesting to see how he's used by Bowen. Craig, yeah, any thoughts? Uh, yeah, it's, I, you know, it's it's a a move that both myself and Kev kind of agreed with when we did our fix the Giants piece a few a few weeks ago. That it it was kind of a no brainer. Um, it's interesting because on a wide, you know, if you if you said for wide receivers, there's gadget players, you know, players who can do a little bit of everything, can can really like change a, change an offense could. Could Simmons really be classified as maybe a gadget defensive player in, in what he does? You know, could he, he potentially be this kind of like hybrid linebacker, edge rusher, safety that Bowen can utilise in different ways? I mean, that that would be the interesting thing to keep an eye on this um, this coming off season. Kind of, Camp's going to tell us a lot, isn't it? If we see him in the safety room, it kind of plays its hand as to where it's going to go. If he's in the linebacker room, then we kind of know where it is. But yeah. Um, there's some breaking news as well. We don't have a breaking news drop anymore. 
Uh, so, news. Kev, thank you for bringing this to our attention. I've got a load of information here. Giants have signed veteran wide receiver Miles Boykin. What a great name. Uh, originally selected by the Ravens Boykin. in the third round of the 2019 draft, uh, played three seasons in Baltimore, recorded 33 receptions for 470 yards and seven touchdowns. Uh, he's then spent the last two seasons with the Steelers, primarily on special teams, uh, has played in 33 games since the start of the 2022 campaign, with 15 special teams tackles to go with his five receptions to 28 yards for the Steelers. Prior to joining the NFL, Boykin played for three seasons at Notre Dame, enjoying his strongest, senior, uh, sorry, strongest season as a senior mm. in 2018, 59 receptions for 872 yards and eight Touchdowns. Uh, Kev, you are our resident Notre Dame uh, expert. Did you want to give us a little bit of uh, flavour of, of Boykin? Who seems yeah, I to mean, be uh, a special teamer really now, doesn't he? Yeah, he does. I mean, it, 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 I don't think he'll give you much in the passing game as a starting level caliber, caliber player now. Um, I mean, he is like six foot four, 220 pounds. So he is a big boy. He ran a 4 4 2 40. So he has got a bit of juice about him, and you know it hasn't really uh, taken off for him in the NFL. But he's sort of like one of those good, sort of like core special teamers, a uh, good locker room guy. You know, completely clean off the field, high character. Um, and it's just just a good addition to the to the wide receiver room that, that sort of needs some more bodies. Nice. I think, sir. Uh, you know, I don't, I don't know much about the guy, but. I think if he's if he's going to come in handy on special teams, then it's not it's not a bad thing, right? Um, Kev, who else? Uh, who, what, who's the other player we signed this week? So this week, um, we had a lot of talk about. Um, so the Giants assigned Deontay Miller. Uh, now, the this is a player that we don't know much about because he has sort of a weird. Uh, track or path to becoming a Giants player. Um, I mean, I hadn't heard of him before. Uh, she and a Jew or Craig or anyone else had you, had you ever heard of this Dante Miller before out of uh, South Carolina? Nope. <laughs> right. So his name is Dante Miller, or his nickname is actually Little Turbo. Little Turbo. Um, is an absolutely great name. I mean, and when he um, he was called Little Turbo when he was at. Um, Columbia University in the Ivy League, and then when he went to South Carolina because he packed on some 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 muscle. I think he's a uh, is he? I think he's what five eleven or something. But he's two hundred pounds. He packed on some muscle, so they dropped the little and they just call him Turbo Miller now, which is just a fantastic name. You know, we got well, we got Motor and Turbo in the in the backfield now with Singletary. Um, you know, but getting back to sort of a little bit about his story because it's quite interesting. I mean, you know, he didn't have the greatest start. You know, he grew up in foster care. After his mother left him with a neighbor and didn't return, uh, he bounced around from foster family to foster family before his mum's cousin, Antoine Flowers, found him and fought for custody. You know, um, Miller started to uh, trust Flowers and she in turn helped him channel his energy into sports, you know, where he did well enough to play three years at Columbia University in the I Ivy League, losing out his fourth year to COVID. Now, as you all know, I, like the Ivy League, you know, you need to be good in school and get your grades and you know that's like a top top level academic um um place mm -hmm. like so you know he's no slouch you know fair play to, to 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 put the work in but then obviously he he knew he had something about him and he wanted to test himself at a, at a higher level than the ivy league so you know he transferred to university of south carolina in the sec you know he um he he went there thinking he had two years of eligibility left but we didn't know it was actually two years to play one season, the admissions team had actually messed up um, his sort of enrollment and, and, you know, understanding of what he had left. Um, so in 2022, he played six games, you know, and he didn't realize that, you know, um, when you redshirt in college football, you, you, you get a year. So essentially you have uh, five years to play for, to play four. So you can redshirt one year, but that redshirt year, you're allowed to play four games. So you can play four games, still red shirt, and that year carries over. Um, but Miller stopped playing, and he tried to get a waiver from the NCAA, but they refused. And um, since then, South Carolina have done everything to keep Miller in football shape so he could enter the 2024 draft, even allowing him to work out the pro day where he ran a 4-2-7-40 and recorded 28 reps on the bench press. Um, 
Mm. When, questioned, um, when questions were asked about his eligibility, they found out he actually should have been in the 2023 draft. So he's actually come in as a free agent, you know. So he was he, he thought he could play, get a waiver and play an extra year of college. They refused, so he was entering this draft, preparing for this draft. And then he finds out, hold on a minute, let's look at this eligibility and let's look at everything behind the scenes. And if they find out that actually you could have been drafted last year. So he... He's been a free agent the whole season, essentially, and just working out with the South Carolina team. So, you know, he, he had lots and lots of um, workouts planned for different teams. Um, and um, he came to the Giants, and he actually has got family in Brooklyn. He sort of, like, grew up around uh, the New York area. And, and he said when he met with the coaches and when he um, did the workout, he just there's something clicked, you know, just felt like home, seeing the prestige you know, growing up sort of around Giants fans. And I don't think he was actually, I don't know if he was a fan himself, but he's from the area and stuff like that. And he sort of like, he, he said the mystique of the Giants, that the, um, that, you know, as soon as they offered him a, a undrafted free agent contract, three-year contract he signed for, uh, he, he snatched their hand off, like, so he's here. And um, Art Stapleton did a podcast with him um, today, actually. And it's a really, really good insight. When you hear him talk, he talks really well. And he doesn't want the, uh, his adversity to sort of, you know, People feel sorry for him. They got, you know, there was just problems in the way, and he overcame. And and that, and and that's the type of player that he sort of like sounds like. Very very fast player, going to be awesome in the return game. And I think he could actually push for 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 a bit of a roster spot. I mean, if you go back and watch some of his film, it is right enough. It is from two years ago, so he hasn't got much film all out there. But it's going to be a film. Um, you can see someone running away from defenders. He just, you know, he gets the crease mm -hmm. and he goes. Um, so, like you know, it's exciting that someone like this has come in, and it almost feels a little bit like a like a like a freebie, like a free draft pick, is it? a little bit. But also, he gets to come in now next week with the veterans and sort of start betting in earlier than these draft picks would. That's a really strange one, isn't it? That's a really really strange one. Like, could, should should have been drafted last year. So te technically, he's now going into a sophomore year. He completely misses rookie year in it. That's that's a strange one, but. You know, by the sounds of it, he sounds like he's a potentially could be quite a decent player. So it's a it's a nice little pickup for the Giants there. But is it me or is it does it the the Giantsness put a tinge of sadness on it because something's not going to work out for him? He's going to end up moving on and going somewhere else, and it him then will be bring, having a breakout and becoming this massive star after he leaves the Giants. <laughs> no, don't say that. You know, he'll make that, he'll 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 make the roster. watch should be like a little bit of lightning in the backfield. No, I like that. I, I think that backstory is really cool. Um, but at the same time, yeah, it's nice that he doesn't want people to sort of feel sorry for him or you know feel any pity for him. He's there to work and he's there to work hard. And I think it's it's good of a uh, good of the the front office to sort of recognise that and, and think actually, you know what, this guy's got something to offer. Let's pick him up. And I, mean, I kind of like that side. Not gonna lie, I knew nothing about him. Absolutely nothing about him until you start talking about him. Okay, so I appreciate that. Um, all right, then last bit of Giants news for us this week. Then Shane, round it out for us, please. Yeah, so last Thursday, uh, the Giants held their local pro day, which allowed them to host in-person workouts for regional talent. Um, and I think I'm rightly saying that these visits don't count as the 30 visits that they can have. So these are kind of like um, extra bonus beneficial uh, attendees. So the list was Javante, Jean Baptiste, AJ of Notre Dame, Max Melton, DB out of Rutgers, Christian Mahogany, offensive lineman out of Boston College, CJ Hansen, offensive lineman out of Holy Cross, Jaden Sheridan, running back out of Monmouth, and also quarterback Marquez McRae out of Monmouth, Sean Bowman, tight end out of Rutgers, MJ Wright, wide receiver out of Fordham. Tyler Boltwright, DB out of Central Connecticut, and Juwan Mitchell, linebacker out of Colorado. Um, also, in addition to these, the Giants have reportedly set up meetings or have already met this week. Kentucky cornerback Andrew Phillips and Penn State tight end Theo Johnson. Um, so, I'll come over to you, Kev, uh, one of our residential draft guys. Any of these stand out to you that are not named Javante? <laughs> I knew you'd do it. Right, well, obviously, like... Um... Andrew Phillips, the Kentucky cornerback, is raising up everyone's draft boards. The more people are starting to watch his film from Kentucky, they're starting to see a really good player. Um, so he's definitely one to watch. I mean, Penn State, Theo Johnson, 
for some reason, like every time we do a mock, he's always there uh, on day three. And I don't know why, because I think he'll actually go sort of like late second, early third. I think he could end up being a really, really good tight end. And someone, you know, if he's there on day three, oh my God, he's like uh, more athletic. Darren Waller, if that m makes any sense, because obviously younger and faster um, is that type of player. But um, just before you carry on, um, James put a comment in earlier, actually saying about Theo Robinson, saying that the Giants spoke about him, I think, as a late round pick with lots of upside. Um, and whether you both had thoughts on him. So I don't know if you just wanted to spend a couple of minutes just expanding on that. Maybe obviously with our resident Penn State expert as well in here, uh, get his his kind of thoughts on Theo. Yeah, so um, I mean, I'd, I'd love Theo Johnson. I, I think if you paired him up with Dan, uh, Danny B, you've got like two absolutely, like a one, two, like you literally, we'd be about four or five weeks into the season. We'd be like, Darren who? Like what a complete... <laughs> Go on, try, see you later. Um, you know, Theo's absolute, he, he, he's an athletic player. I've just got his stats here. Um, he ran a 4.57 uh, 40 at the combine, which puts him 92 percentile, 39.5 vert, which puts him 98 percentile. His 10 yard was 1.55, puts him 93 percentile. He's six foot six, 259 pounds. Um, he can handle himself in, in the run blocking. I'll probably say Danny B is probably a little bit better than him in run blocking. Um, but you know, he's also um, one of these tight hens that can kind of line up um, out wide or in, in the Y. Uh, formation and you know I think he um he, he needs to improve his rate running but I think he would be a great addition if you could get him on day three and like with with him and Danny B I think he'd be set to tight end for the next sort of four or five years. Right. I'm not saying he is this guy, right? But he's he, a little bit like Travis Kelsey. That type of player but faster. Just putting it right there. Anyway, sorry, Kev, you can carry on with the rest of your rest of your player. <laughs> if there was anybody else? Yeah, so I mean, big big fan of Christian Mahogany. He's on my uh, top five inside uh, offensive lineman. I, I just love his game—a proper mauler, like old school, you know, grinded out type player. Uh, Max Melton again is a very very good man corner. Um, he sort of started this. Uh, he started this process, you know. And people, not many people talking about him, but again, he's up to a uh, early uh, mid mid. Day two, sort of late second round type cor uh, cornerback, um, and uh, but the rest of them I haven't really heard of. Um, but I don't forget there was players last year like uh, Trey Johnson, the third who we hadn't heard of. He came in on so uh, one of these similar pr uh, local pro days or a third day visit. Um, but um, and I will just add about uh, Javante John Baptiste. You know he played three years at Ohio State actually and played, transferred for his last season over at Notre Dame. One of those players just comes in, does his job, not flashy, won't have fantastic stats, but sets the edge really, really well and can pressure the quarterback. Although he might not have the stats to show it, uh, be a great day three pickup. You would hope someone with a name like Christian Mahogany would be solid on the offensive line, right? <laughs> But Boston College as well, like Boston College have had some really good offensive linemen come out of there over the last few years. Oh God. Very true. I'm <laughs> I'm here a week. <laughs> oh, all right. Um moving on then, so swiftly on. Um before we get cracking with our three round mock, uh we uh there hasn't been any updates um to uh, our chosen experts' latest um, mocks, but SNY's um, Connor Hughes published an interesting um, three-round scenario the other day. So first round of the draft, he traded number six and then the number 70 overall, which is obviously third round pick, and a 2025 second rounder um, to the Arizona Cardinals for pick number four and then selected... Uh, quarterback out of Michigan, JJ McCarthy of number four. Um, in his article as well, he said the, the Giants must be aggressive if they want the new franchise quarterback. This trade is that. It might seem like an overpay based on most draft charts, but that's what happens when you're dealing for a quarterback. And let's face it, look what we did for Daniel Jones a few years ago. Yeah, he picking him at six wasn't exactly great, was it? Um, and then also in the second round as well, instantly on that, because obviously we still had our second round pick. Uh, producer Craig would like this one. He selected wide receiver Keon Coleman uh, of Florida State as well. Uh, Kev, your thoughts on the draft capital that we're giving up for that one? 
Sorry, I just want to uh, check on Shane. Shane, are you okay there? Yeah. Do you need a moment? Like Con- Connor's obviously trying to uh, push Lance Zerline off the list. Someone who's trying to piss me off. <laughs> <laughs> love it, love it. Uh, so there's two school of thoughts here. I have, sorry, I have two school of thoughts. First, I, I said a few weeks ago, I think someone like JJ McCarthy, I would be happy to sit and pick. Sit at six, if he's there, pick and move, and move on with, with him as your quarterback to sit behind Daniel Jones for as long as it takes. Um, I would move up for someone like Drake May, uh, Jason Daniels, like a player like that, I would aggressively move up for. Um, but then there's also the other train of thought, if he's your guy, if the Giants front office and that, uh, Shane and Dave will believe he's the guy to really take their uh, program, their franchise forward, then you got to get behind it. And you got to believe them. For me, giving up six, seven, eight, and a second rounder next year for JJ McCarthy is a little rich, in my opinion. Um, but if Drake May was there at four, on the other hand, I'd be tempted to give up the first next year to go and get him. That's how much, how much higher I rate Drake May than JJ McCarthy. So back to your original question, I think. Moving up from six to four, giving up seventy and second next year, I think is a little too a little too rich for Gigi McCarthy, but that's not my choice to make. It's not, um, you know, the, the the GM gets paid the big money for a reason. Um, I'll come to you last, Shane, because of the the look on your face, Craig. What do you make of that? <laughs> Get ready um, for a run, people. Uh... I just, I just don't feel like if we're going to give up anything, it needs to be next year's picks and not this year's picks. We're already kind of ham, hamstrung a little bit. Admittedly, if someone turned around to you and said, with your seventh round, you can get a player like Isaiah Simmons, you're going to do it all the time. Um, with the second round, you're going to get a player like Brian Burns. That's the kind of correct way to look at it, I think, is not, oh, we've only got six picks. We've got, you know, we've actually been able to get a franchise altering defensive player and you know a, like I said a gadget player so I'm I'm a fan of that I just don't feel like we should be giving away any more draft capital this year to do anything it's it's just too valuable at this point and we just have way too many holes we just need to sit there and and kind of see what falls into our lap because let's be honest we're picking six like it's not like we're scraping back bottom of the barrel by that point we're still going to get a player who potentially will change our franchise. Absolutely, yeah. Shane, is it rant time? <laughs> Shane looks shocked. <laughs> Swear to God, if the Giants trade up for JJ McCarthy on night one, I am leaving the draft party. I'm going back to the hotel. I'm going to have an early night and I'm going to come back home on Friday morning and pretend it all never happened. And I'll check the draft in a week's time. Look, they better not trade up. No, I'm, I'm, dropped, I'm throwing my pen around now and everything. They better <laughs> not trade up for Jack. Shane's lost oh, it. Like, Shane's lost it, people. Like, what? Like, oh. Now, now I'm on to Daniel Jones rant because you're saying this about, oh, if he's your guy. But I thought Daniel Jones was the guy that, tra- that drafted Daniel Jones. They didn't pay Daniel Jones a decent money. Do not do it. Do not trade up for JJ McCarthy. We do not need DJ 2.0 on our hands for the next five years. Going, oh, is he gonna? Is it? Is the breakout year? Is this the breakout year? Is this the breakout year? Look what you've done, man. Cheers, Connor. I will Shame say, Connor. <laughs> I, I, I will say, talk about the draft picks as well. Like Sheen has shown in the past, like when we picked up Robinson, Wondell Robinson, a couple of years ago, he traded back twice in the second round. So don't be surprised to see, you know, if we are light on draft picks and we've got only got 72, 73 players signed um, at the moment. So don't be surprised if we take that 47 and move back a couple of couple of times and generate a couple of fours, a couple of fifths or a couple of six. Not all them, but if we just generate more picks in, um, in, in day three. Yeah, I think it's a wise move. Um, you going to say something, Craig? No, I'm just still chuckling to myself. <laughs> Here you go, Shane. I love that comment. There's, there's, there's an important question from the, the comments. Shane, <laughs> is it worse to trade up for JJ or take O line at six? I, I think Kieran. Kieran, you're brilliant, bro. If you, 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 you want to piss Shane off, <laughs> that's the way to do it, my friend. 
Well, what a question. Sheehan has left the chat. Same. He's gone. <laughs> gone. All right, Karen, you tipped him over the edge, my friend. Um, he can't answer the question. Myself, <laughs> Craig, and, and uh, Shane's back in the room. Here he comes. Oh, God. It's like people are trying to annoy you. I don't know. I don't know. Like, oh, is that there many options? Can I have a third? Can I have a third option? Like, death. Can I drop a kicker at six? <laughs> I'll have a kicker. Death. Uh, I'll, I'll, kicker I'll take a kicker at six. Yeah, yeah I'll, t- I'll take a kicker or a punter or a lung snapper before I take JJ wow. McCarthy and deploy him. Wow. <laughs> Damn, Kieran went there. Brave, brave, brave man. But I appreciate we'll the question. Thanks, to you. thanks, to, thanks for the question, Kieran. I ever meet you. Like your chances of a being there have completely gone. <laughs> <laughs> I think um, you've ranted so hard that Kev's internet died. Either that or I'll get him in there, Dad. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, one of the two. Nah, you won't give him a headache. It's just there. Uh, He's obviously dropped off for a reason. He'll be back in a minute, no doubt. Um, all right, then. Um, day two and three favourites, then. So, before Wildcat yeah. reloads up, okay, here he comes. I mean, yeah, did, did Kieran piss you off as well, um, Shane? His team, Shane. Yeah. Did Kieran piss you off? No, uh, lads, I, <laughs> I just... Oh, it's brilliant. That's the brilliant. I, uh, just a technical malfunction on my end. No biggie. Um, bring on more comments, please. <laughs> <laughs> keep those comments and questions coming people we love them all right that's it day two and three favorites and as promised at the top shane and kev's tips to watch out for on days two and three of this year's draft uh producer craig is going to lead us through this one over to you mate yep so uh this was a brainchild of all of us um and then i flipped the script on the boys late last night and said could they give us six players three from offense three from defense and then we've taken it even further and said one from day two and two from day three. Uh, so let's pop Kevin and Shane head to head. Neither of them know who each other's picked. Uh, I can tell you in advance that there is one instance where you've picked the same player. I know. I guess are, I, I can guess who as well. Go on. And there are four instances of where you've picked the same position which is even even more interesting so let's start things off with offense and day two uh, they'll appear at the bottom of the screen for anybody who's watching so kev has gone for wide receiver devontes walker from unc which incidentally he is in shane's top five wide receivers at top five and shane has gone for wide receiver troy franklin from Oregon. So I don't know which one out of you two wants to uh, defend the pick first or or explain the pick first. Uh, Shane? Yeah, no problems. Um, so Troy, Troy Frank, who's a bit of a tough one, because I do think he's one of them players that could maybe just teeter into the edge of being a, a day one pick in all honesty. Um, but I'm just thinking that he might fall into day two just because of the, um, the, other, the other players that could be above him. Um, and you know, I don't know about Kev, but it was it was a hard choice. Like, I mean, just two two considerations that was there for me. Te- Tez Walker was one I considered, but I tried to stay away from players that was in my top five um, because I know Tez Walker's not got the um, the draft hype that some players have got. Um, Jalen Polk, Ricky Pearsall, they were two layers I, I seriously considered for day two as well. But I just think with Troy Franklin, he had 114 targets for 81 receptions, 1,383 yards and 14 touchdowns. Now, the one knock on him is he's a little bit light. He's six foot two and only 176 pounds. Um, he's drew comparisons to Devontae Smith, who obviously the Giants were interested in drafting a few years ago until the Eagles uh, jumped us in round one. Um, he put up an 87.3 receiving grade on PFF and had 14 deep catches on the season, which ties in for eighth in this draft class and had 458 deep yards as well, which is 11th. Um, and, you know, for me, I think we've got loads of yak guys, but we've not got many deep guys. And I think that he would be a valuable addition. Kev? Yeah, I like him. Um, I'm guessing you're, he's your uh, pick for around the 47, the second rounder? Yeah. Yeah, so I've gone for uh, Devontae Walker for for around that pick, or maybe the early third. If we get if he was there in the early third, I know you like him a lot. I'm a little bit more down on him, uh, but him with the third with our third round pick would be an absolute 
steal, I think. It'd be so good. Like, why don't we just go draft Drake May and then just pick him up in the third? Like, let's just do that. Uh, you know, that'll set us up nicely. I mean, like, but yeah, so Devontae Walker out of North Carolina, 6'2", 193 pounds, went to the Senior Bowl. He's a big, explosive, vertical wide receiver. He ran 4 uh, three, six, 40, 4.5 vert, 134 uh, uh, broad jump. But he's a strange one, right, in the sense that he had a rocky road coming to this draft as well. Um, so uh, in 2020, he went to North Carolina Central. He didn't play because the season was cancelled because of COVID. So he transferred. He went to Kent State, and he played in eight games. Um, then he started 12 games and made first team all Mac. He transferred after that season to North Carolina. And, but the N NCAA deemed him not eligible to play because it was a technicality. It was technically his second transfer, even though he didn't play for North Carolina Central because of COVID. Um, and he became el eligible to play after week six um, last season. So he started six of the eight games he played in last year with 700 yards, 41 receptions, seven t touchdowns with an average of 17 yards per catch. Now, I just think, like, you know, he is a... He's a good player. Like he's not top five for me. Like his shin, but I think he's still such a good player. Like he runs through contact. I think he had a four, uh, twelve uh, forced missed tackles last year. You know he can high point the football, and he's very, very good run blocker as well. And he needs to work a little bit in the contested catch. Um, and he's not the twitchiest. Like he's not the he's not um, Wondell Robinson, obviously. But um, you know, as someone who can come in and be that X wide receiver on this team, I think it would fit in really nicely. So there we have it, two wide receivers there. So let's move on to day three and the first of the offensive picks at day three. Uh, sh uh, Kev, do you want to jump in straight away with your one here after I've done the announcement? So two running backs. Um, Audric Estime, Notre Dame. I mean, shocker, Kev, shocker. And uh, Why Vidal. am I not surprised? <laughs> Kamani Vidal uh, from Troy for Shane. So, Kev, go on then, your boy. I want to see him change from the Notre Dame blue to the uh, Giants blue so, so bad. I mean, if we're in the fourth round <clears throat> and he's there early in the fourth round, I mean, just imagine him going up, uh, being a one-two tandem with Singletary. I mean, you know, he's a Audric Esme, a Notre Dame, 5'11", 225 pounds, He's a power back, but he has decent vision. Um, you know, he's a four-star recruit uh, coming out of high school. He's actually from New Jersey. He was named New Jersey Football Player of the Year in 2020. Um, was it? Is it, he was a reserve in his first year at Notre Dame. In the second year, he played all 13 games. Uh, he led the Irish with uh, rushing yards, rushing touchdowns. Last season, he played all 12 games. Was second team All American. Went for over 1,300 yards, 18 touchdowns at 6.4. Uh, uh, yards per carry. He's a strong down downhill runner. You know, he's uh, he's got a great missed tackle rate. Uh, he's really good leg drive. He's powerful. He's good vision. He's got a really good jump cut. And have you ever seen his hurdles? He can definitely you know hurdle a guy for a big big for a big boy. Uh, he's got a decent decent amount of bur uh, burst. Um, he always falls forward. So in short yardage goal line situations, he, you know, he just took the ball and ran over people into the end zone. And he's at excellent pass protector now we know we've talked about it before if you're a running back who can pass protect in this in this league you will play um i mean some he's obviously not the perfect uh by any means he's not the quickest he's not the absolute fastest he ran a um was it 4.71 on his pro day uh, on his combine but he got it down to five point a uh, 4.57 on his um on his uh combine results so you know Yes, he's not the sexiest running back in the world. He's a bit of a throwback, but he's definitely um, a player I think can benefit this team this year and would make an awesome uh, one-two punch with Singletary. And then Shane's obviously going for the Lawrence Tynes love affair with Troy there. So uh, do you want to uh, give us the rundown on Kamani? Yeah, just what I do. We'll say if there's any um, people watching live um, that have got maybe some players that they like in day two or three, to pop them in the chat and uh, Craig can put them up on screen. Or if, you, if you've got any thoughts on the players that me and Kev mentioned as well, like throw, throw them on the screen and we'll uh, we'll read them out. Um, but m moving on to the, the position running back, I mean, Kev, how many, how many running backs were you eyeing up in this position? Because for me, there was about four or five that I could have chose from. Loads. Like, yeah. it's almost like, yes, there's not a round one. 
or round two running back in this class. But there's a lot of really good depth in this class. Yeah, definitely. Um, and in the end, I, I, I sat on Kamani Vidal just because he had elite numbers. Uh, 295 attempts this past year for 1,661 yards. Uh, average 5.6 yards per attempt and 14 touchdowns. Their numbers are quite good, but I quite like the next lot of numbers. 1,056 yards after contact this season, which ties in for second in this class, as well as 94 missed tackles force, which again is second in the class. Uh, put up a 93.2 rushing grade as well. Um, and it's not just like it's an anomaly this year either. Um, last year in 2022, he ran for 1,055 yards off 210 attempts for five yards per carry, nine touchdowns and one fumble. He had two fumbles this past year as well. Um, now, some of the concerns for me is obviously he's coming from Troy, so it's not like an, an elite school, an elite opposition, <clears throat> excuse me. And also he has a tendency to bounce a lot of runs to the outside, even though the, the scheme might be run inside or the gap might be inside, he'll run outside. Um, but, you know, Kamani Vidal is just a player that um, when I was doing my draft research and I was looking at all the running backs, them, them numbers that I've just mentioned just stood off the chart for me. Got watching his tape and I was like, you know, some of them might be there, some are there with this guy. OC went to Troy as well, don't forget. Now, James has said that either of your picks change here with, after signing a running back with Miller. Um, we, th these these picks are from today, really, um, aren't they? So, so we already knew that Miller was signed before you guys sent me, sent me these across. Um, and there's another one from Joel, but I'll I'll do that after uh, after the next load. So the final load, which is where I think you are the same again, <laughs> same position. Don't worry, Shane. He hasn't got your boy, but we have got a pair of tight ends. Uh, Kev going with Jared Wiley from TCU, and Shane going with his boy Ben Sinot from Kansas State. Shane, start us off before you do actually. The Wakanda jerseys from TCU are absolutely phenom, aren't they? So smart. So, so smart. Anyway, sorry, Shane. Ben Th this is Shane. This is Shane hoping he's going to be there in day three. <laughs> ben Sinop yeah. will not be there in day three. Yeah, 100%. If he is, you run to the, the podium. Like, if, if he's there, you get a plane ticket if you're in London to make the draft pick for the Giants. Like, that's how much of a... A, a steal it'll be. Um, I mean, I, like I, said, I don't think that's one of the the hardest things I find we do in these day and two three prospects. It's kind of, you know, I mean, I was looking at some players. There's there's a player I look at in a bit. I've seen one website had him as a day a round two pick, and one of them had him as a round five pick. You know, that's just the variety that you get with different people's opinions. Um, but for me, I went for Ben Sinot. Uh, I think he's the only player who is in my top five. To be fair, just because. Um, like Ben Sinot is my guy in this draft class. 73 targets, 48 receptions, six touchdowns, 669 yards. He had two drops, 14 missed tackles force, which ties for fourth in the tight end class. Um 81.0 receiving grade as well. One knock on him could be that he needs to improve his uh, run blocking, which you know could be said for a lot of tight ends in this uh, in this draft class. But you know, I don't Kev's right, I don't think he will be there day three because if he is, it's an absolute steal. Where where is he in your top five again? Uh, four. I think I had him at. Did I mean three or three? Babe, I've moved him up. Love yeah, me some Ben tonight. I like to keep my top fives on top of Medan. <laughs> <laughs> They're there to be tinkered with right up to the draft. Not for our poor listeners. Our, our poor listeners that get these top fives, and we have to we 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 to just we owe it to our listeners. Shane Shane living and dying by the sword there. <laughs> um, Kev, Jared Wiley, Shane, the man of the people, <laughs> people's champ, some might say. <laughs> <laughs> Fair play, right then. I've gone for another tight end, a true day three prospect. Uh, I've gone for Jared Wiley out of TCU, 6'6, 250 pounds. Another senior bowl invite, you can kind of see a trend here. Um, he's a solid receiving tight end. He ran a 46240. Um, he went to Texas, played 12 games, two starts, uh, got injured in his next year. Um, and then the third year, he played 11 games with eight stars, that, and then he transferred TCU. Um, 
in his last season, he played all 12 games and was first team all Big 12. 520 yards, 47 receptions, 8 touchdowns, 11.1 average uh, yards per reception. Um, he's got really, really good build for the position. He's got very, very solid hands. Just really, really solid. Um, I don't think uh, one of the stats here says he, he hasn't dropped the ball on a 53 career targets. Um, you know, his size makes him a really good red zone threat. Uh, solid pass and run blocker, you know, so a decent all round tight end. Uh, and he's played on special teams. Um, so it's the only like kind of negatives with him is you know, he's he was limited as a receiver in the sense he wasn't used that much as a receiver as the 520 yards, I'll tell you. Um, and he's he's an average athlete, he's not you know, he's not Theo Johnson, for example, he's not that type of athlete. Um, he might be a little bit more of a uh, Daniel Bellinger in that, that sort of respect. And then he doesn't really do much after the catch. He catches the ball every time, but then that's pretty much where the play ends up. Um, so again, he could just be a solid, solid uh, addition to what could be a thinning tight end room. So the question, just to bring that back in from Joel, is anyone else think Rattler is worth a shot in the third, allowed Daves to get his hands on a Foreman Heisman favourite um, and then he has said, I know Rattler might need more than a year, but um, weirdly, not a player we have really spoken about, um, despite the fact that we potentially need a quarterback. Is there a reason behind that? Shane? I mean, oh yeah, sorry. I was gonna, I think it's funny because like he was the uh, he was the next big thing a few years ago. Like it was Sp- Spencer Rattler was going to be number one overall pick in the following year's draft, and then he just sort of. Um, I think he, he, tran- he transferred and just had a, a complete disaster. I mean, for me, I wouldn't get drafting Spencer Rattler personally. Um, it's not he's got nothing to do with the fact that uh, the type of player is or the development. It's just there's other needs that we, we we're going to have. I think if you're not taking a quarterback in round one, I'm probably going to avoid it completely. To be honest with you, because we we need cornerback, we need a wide receiver. That's two picks there straight away. You. Probably want to be looking at uh, maybe adding a safety, a tight end if Darren Waller decides to retire. So I just think there's too many needs to be taking a developmental quarterback on day three, unless let's say for instance you trade back on on day three for maybe the back end of day three, for instance, or a supplemental pick. Yeah, I completely agree with everything she just said. I mean, we just said we're lack, lacking picks as it is. You know, we haven't really got the ammunition to take a flyer on someone like Rattler. Um, you know, he's six foot. He's two ten. Uh, he's a little bit erratic. I mean, I mean, don't get me wrong. His offensive line at uh, at South Carolina was absolutely atrocious. I mean, it, it was so so bad. Um, but yeah, he's one of those like you know, if if we had a, an abundance of picks, yes, it could be worth a bit of a flyer. But like, we really, really don't. And and he'll be gone probably before day three or very very early day three. Um, he throws a beautiful ball. He throws the ball really well can make a lot of uh, a lot of hard throws can get move around the pocket as well um i just from what i've from what i what you see and what people say you just don't know if he's got it between the ears and that would be my worry and you know like Chin said if you're going after a quarterback you need to it's a round one quarterback you need to be 100 percent certain because your jobs are tethered to these quarterbacks right so moving on to defense and our f- same Z's, I guess. Bit of snap going on here between the two. So the day two pick, Kyrie Jackson out of Oregon. Kev, do you want to start us off with uh, thoughts on Kyrie? Kyrie Jackson out of Oregon. This big old 6'4", 203-pound cornerback. Uh, again, went to the Senior Bowl. Uh, I just think he's a really good all-round player, you know, and um, I think he can play sit press. I think he can play uh, off man coverage. Um, I think he could even turn into a pretty good safety um, if you got him into that DB room. Um, he's one of, again, you know, he's going to be one of the older prospects in this. I think he played six years of college or something. I think he's going to be like 24 when he comes out, which is not desirable. Um, um, he, you know, played for Bama. At, so he, he was suspended at Bama, right? And no one, it's not really come out as why she and do you know why he was actually suspended by Nick Saban? No, it hasn't really come out. I mean, I don't know if it's bad or good. I mean, you have to look into that the front office to see if there's anything on toward there. But like, he started all 12 games for Oregon last year and was the all pack 12 first team. He had 34 tackles, two sacks, three interceptions, eight pass breakups. 
He's you know he's tall, he's long, um, he's had experience as a receiver, so his ball skills are good. Uh, he's very good at uh, point uh, uh, at the catch point, going up with receivers. Um, he's very quick. Uh, he's physical, physical in the run game. He can come and lay a hit on you. Um, I mean, like I said before, some of the negatives though. He's he's going to be the old one of the oldest players in this class. Uh, but he is athletic, and he's one of those players. I think that um, I think that he could come in, and he could be safety number two straight away. As in, I think he's he's mature enough, and he's showed enough good things on tape that he can come in and pl- and be, he, might, he wouldn't be number one, but I think he'd definitely come in and be a starter uh, straight away. But again, you know, you got to look at those um, those off field issues if there is any issue at all. I you know never came to light why he was suspended at Bama. Shane. Yeah, I mean, I just love the idea of pairing him opposite Deontay Banks. I think, you know, you could potentially have two lockdown cornerbacks there for the next however many years. Um, I mean, he was targeted 38 times, allowed 19 receptions for 200 yards, uh, one touchdown giving up and three interceptions. He only had two missed tackles. We saw last year that the Giants had issues tackling, so, you know, that's not going to be an issue with him. Um, he put up a 77.4 coverage grade and an 82.2 run grade. And, like, you know, you look at his measurables, like everything you want in a cornerback, to be honest with you. Um, just getting it up here, six foot, six foot four, 194 pounds. A um, little bit slow with a 450. Uh, 4.540, but his 10-yard split, which is I'd argue is a little bit more important than a 40-yard run, was 1.5, which puts him at 87 percentile. Um, he has really long arms as well. Um, probably the only knock on him realistically is that he can be a little bit over aggressive and a little bit handsy at times and get get a few penalties. But you know that happens with all college players, especially DBs when they enter the NFL. Um, and I just think you know, like I say, him and Banks could be easy CB1, CB2 for the next four or five years. Right, so moving on to day three, then uh, got you know back back to the differences, back to back to the against each other kind of mentality. So uh, a couple of safeties. So Kev, uh, Dan, would you like to take a crack at that name? Yes. <laughs> no. I mean, yes. Which one? You can, which one? one? Both. You, can, you can do both. You can do both. Which one? <laughs> All right then. So Kev has gone with Kitan. Oladapo. We'll go with that. And Shane's gone with Sione Vaki. I'm I very nearly went with him as well, Shane, to be fair. <laughs> nice. So, um, who is going first? Let's go with who went first last time? Kev. Let's go with Shane first then. That way. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, Sione Vaki, he's someone who um, I picked up about October, November time. I was watching a Utah game and he, he just stood out for me. And the first thing I do when a player stands out is their name goes into my notes and he stayed there. Um, and then when I seen he was declaring, I was like, okay, I'll be honest with you. I did try and see if I could squeeze him into my top five last week for safeties, but I was just like, there's no way I can, I could put him as a, t- as a top five. But, you know, he... Um, he had 38 tackles this past year, 17 defensive stops. He had one touchdown, one interception, one pass breakup. Um, he had eight missed tackles, which is probably a little bit higher than what I would like. Um, and he can actually play all three phases. That's correct, all three phases. Um, he's a safety. He played running back this past season for Utah as well. And he also offers something in special teams. Um, you know, what one, one of the comps I've seen mentioned to him is someone we kind of know, that's Jabril Peppers. Again, he was another safety who came out of Michigan and could play um, on the offence and on the defence as well. So, you know, lucky for me, day three guy, safety's a position of need and, you know, a little bit of versatility there in regards to um, where where he can play on, on, on offence if you need him. You know, you, you're just looking at a bit of a situation and what he can bring to special teams as well. Okay, so Kev, you've gone for Oregon with the first one, Oregon State with the second one. <laughs> yeah, I've gone for uh, Kitan Oladapo, uh, Oregon State, 6'2", 216, went to the Senior Bowl. Um, you know, he's seen more of as a box safety, although he did register snaps in the slot as a single high, a split safety. Um, he ran a five five eight, which... Isn't great, but for the type of player he is, is absolutely fine. Uh, 2022, he started all 13 games. I was first team all pack 12. 
Last season, he played all 13 games and was first team all Pac-12. Last season, he had 73 tackles, one sack, one forced fumble, two interceptions, seven pass breakups. He is like just a very physical defender, you know, real, real powerful. He's strong. Uh, he's a really good blitzer. Uh, your typical like downhill box safety. He's good with angles, you know, running to after quarter after uh, players to make a tackle. You know, he's fluid. Um, and no real really con is that although he's played sort of like single high and, and split safety, he probably will be a box safety only in the league. But um, you know, the, with our safety room at the moment, you know, uh, he would absolutely fit in. Lovely. Cool. And then let's round this out. Then uh, nice. Defensive line and edge here. Uh, I'll do these ones. Uh, <laughs> not that they're easy. Uh, Shane's gone for edge. Uh, Javon Solomon. Kev's gone easy. for J Justin. What the hell is that? <laughs> Eboyjibi. Eboyjibi. Jesus. Yeah, I never would have got there. Dan. <laughs> <laughs> Another Troy not man for Shane. Another Troy man for Shane. Come on, Shane. What? Another Troy man. Come on. To be fair, I was seeing times are loving this. I, I sent this to Craig, and then I was like, "Oh, I didn't read it." I like, picked two players from Oregon and two players from Troy. Like I completely, it was unplanned or anything like that. Um, Javon Solomon, he, he's probably my guy on defense. I really, really like um, Javon Solomon. Um, this past year, we had seventeen sacks, ten hits, twenty-one or easy. Put up a ninety-point-nine pass rush grade. An 81.9 run D grade uh, with a pass rush win rate of 17.1%. Now, he does have size and length concerns. And although he put up good run D grade, he's, he's more of a pass rusher than he is a uh, run stopper. Um, you know, in his total career at college, he had 33 sacks, 49 and a half tackles for loss. Um, I say he's a little bit undersized um, in terms of his weight uh he comes in at 246 pounds and only six foot one which is a little bit small um hands and arm boys though he's he's in he's above 90 percentile for uh his hands and arm size and his wingspan is 86 percent as well so that's not the issue it's just his his actual height and um he, his weight but i think you know again another player who probably because he goes to troy is potentially being overlooked um and the reason why i went for edge is because <laughs> Yeah, we've, we've got Brian Byrne, that's great. And we've got Kayvon Thibodeau, that's great. But we've got Aziz, who can't really stay on the field. We've got um, Boogie Basher, who I don't know if he even exists anymore. Let's, let's just put him in the Aaron Robinson category, in all fairness. Um, and, you know, you can, you, you're going to need pass rushers. And if, if Aziz does have injuries, you need a third one to, to be able to come on the field and give Tibbs and Burns a bit of a break. Okay. Yeah, I like that one. He'd be more of a designated pass rusher on obvious passing downs, but he'd, he'd give you like a good, good bit of depth. So I've gone for uh, Justin Ebojibi uh, out of Alabama, six foot four, two hundred ninety-seven pounds. Went to the Senior Bowl. He's a versatile, versatile uh, D lineman. Um, you know, he went to Alabama uh, this past year. He started fourteen games and made first team All SEC. Uh, you know. For his size, at nearly 300 pounds, he's very, very light in his feet. Very, very quick get-off. Uh, he's got a good anchor for his size. Uh, just hustles. One of those hustle-type players. Uh, plays through the whistle. Um, you know, he played all over for Alabama. He actually played, like, on the on the outside of tackles as well as inside. Um, so his versatility. The problem with that is he, he was a bit of a in-betweener. A bit of a tweener. Um and sometimes, you know, against the bigger, bigger offensive linemen, they can kind of just get stopped quite easy. Um, but I think as a as a three technique, five technique, uh, alongside Dexter Lawrence as your nose tackle, I think he'd be a great, great compliment. Um, I wouldn't put him on the outside. I don't think he's got the speed or bend for it. Definitely have him sort of inside as more of a three technique, D tackle, or a, a three, four, in, uh, D end. Nice. All right, then. Um, all right, so you do, all those players you've just gone through, out of all of them, Shane, if you could pick one to be a New York Giant, who would it be and why? One to be a New York Giant? Um, what? I'll probably go for Kyrie Jackson, to be honest, just because I feel that the need at cornerback is probably bigger than all the others. I imagine that we're going to go wide receiver in round one, hence it's not going to be Troy Franklin as my pick. Um, I think if we do go wide receiver round one, I think it's 
getting to the point now where it feels a bit imperative that we go corner back in round two. Yeah. Sorry, guys. I completely agree. He's one for me. I mean, out of all those players there we just talked about, he's the, the one that's going to come in. The uh, he's the one that's going to come in and be a cornerback too and be a starter. I mean, like I said, um, I think we go uh, wide receiver earlier than, than the third round. Um, that's where I have uh, Walker. I think uh, Oldapo will be a rotational guy. The, D the uh, Alabama DT will be a rotational guy. Uh, so I think, yeah, I mean, as someone who can come in and contribute right away at a position of need, we've got to go for Kyrie Jackson. No, just keep your eyes out for Kyrie Jackson on day two, day three, day two. That, that's Kyrie Jackson. Four. Kyrie Jackson being a flop and getting drafted in round five or six a little bit like Keely Ringo last year. <laughs> <laughs> imagine, imagine. Yeah, keep your eyes out for him because uh, you never know. He, we might see him in blue sometime soon. Jeff is right, here just in time for the old, draft. Uh, wow. Even a uh, Hefe. Yeah. Even Jeff, how you doing? Hope you're well. Looking forward to your episode tonight too. Um, all right then. Fresh off the back of WrestleMania at the weekend, um, it's time for the main event. No, it's not Cody Rhodes against Roman Reigns. It's our three-round giant smock draft. Let's get are it. Are you telling me we're not going to have? Are you me we're not going to have the Undertaker, John Cena, and whoever else came out at the end? The Rock. <laughs> <laughs> Seth Rollins, who I have seen. Yeah. No, unfortunately, we're not going to have the Undertaker come out. Uh, Craig, Cheers, lads. I was planning to watch it tomorrow night, but. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> oh, spoiler alert, Kev. To be fair, there's a, there's a rumor going around that it's fake. I mean, I don't believe that. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I don't know where I heard that rumor, Shane. Again, again, spoiler alert, if you didn't know already. Producer Craig, how is the three-round mock draft going to work? Uh, so as you can see on the screen right now, uh, we have the PFF mock draft simulator set up. Uh, we will down it to a bit slower than horrifically turbo so no one can see the picks. Uh, we have chosen the Giants. We've kept all the other uh, settings as default. We have three rounds. Uh, we will enter the draft and away we go. We'll try and give you the top five and then it's down to... Shane and Kev uh, to battle it out and give us who they think the pick is, and then me and Dan will agree, probably. <laughs> and then there is a disclaimer that if Marvin Harrison Jr. is wide receiver three, we're restarting because that is never going to happen. Shane, Shane is adamant about this, and yeah. in our testing, he was like, we're not having this. Yeah. So, the first thing is what, 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 what the people would want. Let's face so, it, it's not realistic, is it? No. So let's start it off. Uh, Dan, if you read through the top five and then hand it over to the boys and we'll see where we go. So I may have to get my magnifying glass thing. I'm joking. Yeah. Let's go. Okay. You can scroll up for me. There we go. So one, Caleb Williams to Chicago. Two, Jalen Daniels to Washington. Three, Marvin Harrison to New England. Four, Malik Neighbors to Arizona, five Roma didn't say to San Diego. We're on the Thank you. six. Joe Walt, you are a New York Giant. Take the card up. <laughs> Get him out. Ed will remove him. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we don't need to discuss this, do we? If, if, if we're going by the board, I'm, I'm <laughs> done. <laughs> right. So just hover it over and. <laughs> Um, <laughs> so, so uh, we're on the clock. We're on the clock, lads. Where are we going? What are we I'm saying? Checking quarterback Drake, mate. Don't move on. <laughs> Happy days. Could you imagine if we were in the Giants' war room? Like Joe Shane's sitting there. There's us four, and Joe Shane's going. Shane, Shane, should we take Joe? Should we take Joe? <laughs> well, you know, you know, Joe Shane's a Notre Dame fan. Is he? He is indeed. I, yeah, I, I couldn't give a toss. <laughs> 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 okay, so so this is <laughs> ultra bands. Oh, people are trying to ruin my Tuesday nights, man. Oh, what are we doing? Oh, please. <laughs> right, so um, 
Drake, Drake just for May. months. It, it's, no, it's, it's got to be Drake it, May, right? It, it's a no-brainer. Yeah. No-brainer. Right, there we so go. Drake, Drake May. That's... Daniel Jones, see you later, mate. No, he's got he's got a year to shop himself to put himself in the trade market. So while this is obviously yeah. going through, and we can see the the picks going through, and yes, the Vikings did take JJ McCarthy. Um, how long do you think Drake May does need to sit for? Because I know that there's been a lot of kind of discussion around the fact that there are some people who are saying, you know, you take Drake May, you could ruin your future. Uh, I'm guessing you guys don't agree with that, but is he is he more of a prospect? Um, I mean, I, I I think like if you if you need him to, he could start week one. In my personal opinion, like he's like, like he's probably the QB two to start week one. In my opinion, like Jaden Daniels, I'd have him sitting. That one from Michigan, who I refuse to draft, I'd have him sitting. Uh, most Drake May is someone that you you know you could you could start week one if you really wanted to. Now, would I would I want Locust to start in week one? Not really. Let him sit. Let Dave get his hands on him. Let Shaitini get his hands on him. Let Kafka get his hands on him. Mould him into what you want your quarterback to be. Yeah, that's exactly what I was going to say. Um, like he's the type of player to come in. He needs a little bit of refinement. You know, the love of his feet, footwork needs a little bit of refinement. Um, so if you get Shea Tierney's hands on him, because let's face it, Shea Tierney is is the OC in waiting when Kafka contract finishes at the end of this year. Um, so you want Shea Tierney to have him for a full year, well, as much as a full year as possible. You know, sometimes you have to start them halfway through the season, but you'd like Daniel Jones to play well enough to sort of get us competitive uh, and have have Shea Tierney and uh, Dabes mould him into the type of quarterback that he can be. Because, like, let's face it, like, you know, people put the comparisons out there. He could be the next Josh Allen. So if we just go back and have a little look at some of the players that went, uh, so yeah, JJ eleven to Michigan, uh, to Michigan, to Minnesota. Uh, that that doesn't shock anyone. Uh, Ron Coach not going to twelve. Yeah, Fashanu, who's now Fashnu apparently after Fashnu, Fashnu to the to the Raiders. There, of course, it's Fashnu. Sure. Uh, I can't see anybody else there. Quinion Mitchell down to pick 19. I know you boys are both quite high on, on Mitchell. And then, oh, Cooper he's going to bloody the Eagles there. Chop, of course he did. Chop to Dallas, Shane. Well, that that, that did it with um, Moika, so. Yeah, very true. Uh, Call Aiden word... McKinstry's gone. Damn it. Worthy, worthy I'm just waiting for the line. name. Worthy snuck into the first. Yeah. Um, Bo Nix going to the Patriots with their second rounder there. So who did they take? Harrison in the first round? They took Harrison. So Harrison. Yeah, and that's, that's, yeah that's decent. And then Penix being the other quarterback there. Pick 44 to the Raiders. So the Giants are now on the clock. Just mix, missed out on Saints drill. I have no idea how to say that. Yeah, Mike Sainstrill. Mike Sainstrill, yeah, the nickel slot corner out of Michigan. Yeah, and then another Michigan player just before to win Roman Wilson. So you've got... Right. We are on there. the clock. So I'd like to look at wide receivers. What about you, Shin? Yeah, I mean, two names on stand out already on the screen for me is Lad McConkey and um, Troy Franklin, who obviously I've just spoken about. What a lad. <clears throat> so, what a lad. I'm here a week. I would lean towards Coleman here, uh, being the big-bodied receiver, then Franklin over McConkey. I know McConkey's gets open. He's a fantastic right runner. I get that. I just think uh, a receiver like Franklin or Coleman would uh, would complement the receiving core we've got a little bit better. Yeah, I mean, uh, like I say, for me, it's out of McConkey or, or Franklin. I'd, I'd probably pick Franklin over McConkey, to be honest. I think... Um, Lad, Lad McConkey, someone who's you know probably at the wide receiver position. Nobody's draft capital has gained more since the season ended. To be honest, I mean, like I kind of had him in that fifth, fourth, fifth round category, and kind of you know when when the season ended, and then sort of since then with the um, the bowl games and the combines etc. and the pro days, he's kind of 
being being spoken about as a potential guy that could sneak into round one at some point. I don't think he's a round one talent personally. Um, but I'd go for Troy Franklin based on kind of everything that I spoke about a little while ago. I'm not going to go over it all again. Agree. Cool, Dan. Take take the draft expert advice, yeah. Let's uh yeah, let's go for the expert's right. advice, Troy Franklin. Draft, draft advice. <laughs> <laughs> Cool. So that is Troy Franklin's nice. wide receiver. But yeah, I, just whilst it's going through, I will say that I think it's imperative. You either go wide receiver round one, cornerback round two, or if you're going to take that quarterback in round one, you've got to get that wide receiver in round two. And, you know, I know we've spoke about um, draft capital, but maybe Shane gets a little bit aggressive and moves up if, if, if a, a certain wide receiver that they'd really like. He's falling. So they've got a first round grade on a wide receiver that's falling to the back end of the first start of the second. Maybe they try and throw in a fourth rounder and try and move up a little bit for someone. People are not going to believe that this is being done live and real, but Kyrie Jackson's sitting right there. We are no, on the clock yeah, at 17. No mate. <laughs> Unless obviously you want Tez Walker and you want to double dip. No, we haven't got. I don't think we've got the draft capital to double dip at wide receiver at this point. I mean, you know, I would, I would have the conversation with Hicks and Jackson, the two players that sort of stand out as in huge needs. I mean, if we, if we, I mean, Christian Hines is someone who I think is good value here. I think very good value here. Um, but to match value with need, I think Jackson or Hicks sort of meets that for this year. Um, Hicks would come in and uh, his great all round safety. He would be your starting safety straight away. Or Curry Jackson would come in and, like we said, be your uh, cornerback number two um, opposite Banks. So, um, yeah, I suppose just whatever you guys think. What, just have a look what other corners are available. I just want to see who's, who's dropped this far. So, cornerback, we have Andrew Phillips and then the two Florida State boys and BJ Day, James, who all should really be there at this time anyway. Yeah, I mean, to me, I, I like Chris Abrams' drain as well. To be honest with you, um, but yeah, I think Kyrie Jackson's got to be got to be the pick there without a doubt. Yeah, I think so. He's your definite outside outside corner, whereas um, Abrams' dream is more of a, the slot sort of nickel cornerback. I mean, which we, we got, got, kind of need as well, to be honest. Now, now we've got Darnay Holmes, ain't we, Dan? <laughs> we play give up, give up, big play, Darnay. Don't you worry about that. We've got big play, Darnie. So, three round mock draft is uh, is looking pretty healthy so far. I'm not going to know. So, I mean, you might, might as well speed it up to turbo now. No, just get it done. But get it done. So, um, there we have it. That's the first one. So, it will anal analyze the draft, to give us A pluses for all three picks. <laughs> Thank you. Nailed it. I found this with PFF. That that's it does the definition take, of nailed it, right? Sometimes PFF takes ages to analyse the draft and some, and then it just decides not to do it. Um, I, mean, I will say, with them three players we've drafted, you, an argument could be could be met that you've got three round one talents there. Not saying they're going to get that production, but they're all players that have been spoken about as being round one worthy at some point in this process, even Kyrie Jackson. So it was kind of it was kind of that there was there was kind of that sort of consensus last year, wasn't there, with our first three picks last year as well. Is that the talent we picked up in the first three rounds last year were all potential round one talents at some point. So you know, I think if if, I mean, if, if the first three rounds fall that way this year, then I think I'll be uh, one happy man. Well that's it. We looked at it, you got your starting franchise quarterback that this front office and head coach can get behind. Um, you've gone and got him an absolutely explosive weapon. Um, great after the catch. You know, he catches the ball really well. He's a little slight. That would be like one of the knocks on him. His Franklin's a little slight, but uh, he's definitely, you know, an explosive player. Um, to go on the outside, to go along with the Slayton, the Hyatt, the Wondell Robinsons. Um, and then um, you've added what we believe to be our uh, big, strong, six foot four uh, starting corner opposite Deontay Banks. So it looks like the grading is broken on here, um, but obviously in the full results, if we have a look again. A plus, uh, it's fine. Yeah, yeah <laughs> A plus is all around. Pick six, Drake yeah. May. Uh, further down, pick 47, 47, Troy Franklin. 
and then finally pick 70 Kyrie Jackson so that's one scenario so let's let's take the second scenario so if we go back to the simulator if PFF ever wants to wake up <laughs> have you used them NFL yeah. um, NFL.com NFL Network have started using PFF's draft simulator and stuff now have they yeah, and they've started getting PFF analysts on their show as well now. So they must have some sort of connection there. Mm. Uh, James is just saying there, PFF, just I'm fairly getting my yeah. hopes up here with uh, the way that, that that just fell. You're not wrong, James. You're not wrong. Are you mocking me? <laughs> oh, boom, boom. Dan, Dan will be upset with that one. I'm sure to stop sharing for the moment because obviously there's, there's an issue with the uh, the way that the simulator's running for some reason. Joy, the joys of being live, eh? The joys yeah. of being live. Yeah, no Absolutely. idea what, what is going on there, but um, I'll we'll just go back at it. Cool. We'll just go back and touch back on the, on that. So, obviously, Kev, I know you said about Drake May being a bit slight, and him, it's, but that's not necessarily the end of the world because you look at Dan Jones's durability and his sort of... The, the luck he's had with injuries, I mean... Surely, just being a, a slight quarterback necessarily isn't isn't such a bad. Thing. Sorry, I was talking about Franklin, the wide receiver. Oh, I thought you were talking about um, Drake May, but even being a, a slight receiver as well is, you know, you got to be, got to be quick. And if you got to, if you're if you're a tall, big body receiver, then being slight is is kind of expected. So, so just for context, he is six two, so he's got good length, good height, but he is one hundred eighty three pounds. You kind of want him over that 190 mark, really, at that sort of height, 195, pushing 200. He weighed in at 176 at the convoy, so he's even less oh, wow. than that. That is, quite, that, is, that is really light. But I think this is pro yeah. day. Maybe it's pro day weight. Maybe, I don't know. But there's, going, there's going to be some time there for him to, for, to bulk a little bit and put some put some more muscle on, for sure, no doubt. But, um, the thing is, one time yeah. Smith got the league undersized, and he, he's been pretty good yep. for Philly, in all fairness. Yep, very true. And like you said, a lot of people talk about him sort of back into the first leg. So for him to slide, and players will slide as well. You know, everyone goes, oh, that'll never happen. That'll never happen. But we see it every year. You know, players who people perceive to be day one picks, day two picks, you see, you do see them slide. So, um, you know, to pick them up there, I think, is good value. Well, I mean, you say that that's never going to happen. Drake, Drake May is never going to fall to six, is he? Let's face it. No. I mean, we might have to go and get him. So we might end up with him. So this draft might be actually accurate. It's just we've given up next year's first to go up to three to get him. Yeah, yeah, very true. Uh, I mean, just just on this team as well. Uh, sorry, Dad, because I just looked at his right. NFL combine page, and uh, an NFC scouting director was quoted as saying he's not as explosive as Jalen Hyatt was coming out, but I looked at him in a similar way of what he can do for your offense and what you won't ask him to do. He's a better rate runner than Hyatt. So if you if you've got Jalen Hyatt. But a better rate runner, because that was his big knock on him coming out, mm. and the height. Yeah, exactly. Um, you know, it'd be quite quite an interesting pairing having uh, Franklin Hoyt. Um, but you know, like I said, the, the thing for me, eight then three picks, probably my most favourite pick would be Kyrie Jackson in round three. Like that'd be the steal of the draft. Nice. I mean, let's let's talk a little bit about our our. Actual needs in the in the draft. What sort of what are the top three positions you guys think we we really sort of need to strengthen that? Let's go with Shane first. Uh, what was that question? Sorry. The sort of the, the, the three sort of biggest positions of need that, that you think we need at the at, as it stands at the moment with the roster we've got as it stands at the moment. Wide receiver, cornerback, and then think for the third one, you could make an argument for offensive line, you could make an argument for linebacker, you could make an argument for safety, like any one of them would be, you could make argument for. Well, I, can, I know what I know what Kev's picking is, and that's a, that's a safety, right? Safety, I mean, yeah, at the moment, um, our starting safety is Pinnock and Belton, who, who I think are good players, but um, you kind of want another sort of starting caliber player at that position. Uh, and obviously people talk about it. QB is considered uh, a big need in this draft, but just to reiterate what uh, Shane said, 
you have to come away with a starting caliber wide receiver and a starting caliber cornerback. Yeah, I mean, quarterback is is it is a position of need. Don't get me wrong, but it's almost like it maybe it may not. Like obviously, listen to the the what you guys spoke about with Jordan Reed the other day, and it's is. Is it a year too early for quarterback? Are we, you know, potentially looking next year? Obviously, when we can offload Daniel Jones after what there's there's so many different variables that could happen. But if, like I said, with this the this mock we just had, if Drake May is there at six, it's like you can't not go and get him. You can't you can't not go up to that podium and 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 pick him because he is that good and he is a gen, you know potentially a generational talent. Here we go, draft simulator is back online. Back in the room, uh, pain back in, in the, the back side. Not like I work in IT okay. or anything. Right. <laughs> Not uh, right. So if we kick off the draft Great. again. And as you can see, do we need to restart, Shane? I swear, if they take... What? <laughs> what? What? What bullshit is that? We'll attempt what? to restart. <laughs> What was the scenario? This one. What are we doing? Are we just looking at all options, or we were going to? So what we were going to do is we were going to trade back with the Vikings for eleven and twenty-three for six. That was the okay. scenario. So do we just offer the trade and see what they do? And if Shane doesn't like it, we can uh, restart. Yeah, yeah, no, crack on. <clears throat> and who did they pick? They took what? JJ. JJ McCarthy. JJ McCarthy. <laughs> 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 right Marvin's gone we don't need to worry about what happened up oh, the top imagine you try to <laughs> six and you compare you can you compare Justin Jefferson with Marvin Harrison Jr and you go oh let's let JJ well what <laughs> <laughs> okay uh, right uh moving on to pick 11 uh so where are we going with number 11 guys Okay, so tell me you're thinking what I'm thinking. I know what you're thinking, my friend. Yeah. You want yourself some of that Toledo boy, don't you? I do indeed. Nice corner, like like you're thinking. So, Quinny Mitchell, yeah. We obviously we spoke last week about cornerbacks, so we won't go into it in too much depth. But the difference in average draft position between Mitchell and Cooper Dijon is is what about eight picks there. Is, is there that much of a difference considering, you know, Cooper's actually ranked above him on the big board? Kev? I, 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 th I think, I think it's Quinion Mitchell with everything he's produced on the field and the, um, the pre-draft sort of process, he is head and shoulders above all cornerbacks in this class. Now Cooper DeGene, I think is class and very, very good. And in most other drafts it would be a uh, uh, corner, cornerback one. But I think Quinion Mitchell, if you were to, like I've said it before with other players, if you take, right, what do I want from a cornerback? What do I want? Put him in a machine and let it fire out. It will fire out Qu Quinion Mitchell. So, so I'm guessing it's a Quinion Mitchell pick then, right? Yeah, I mean, look, we need a cornerback. Um, obviously, Cooper DeGene's a safety at the next level. Um, so I'm going to get for Quinion Mitchell. There we go. And we have that second first round pick coming up. So we certainly do. Let's see how much that... talk about in the meantime. Let's see how it's gonna fall. The thing is, like you'd look at you'd look at cornerback and wide receiver there, and you've obviously got a quality, quality um cornerback staring at you in the face, you know. Um, so you just go ahead and make that pick, and now you would look and say, Okay, what wide receivers are on the board now? So obviously Bonex went three picks before to Seattle. So is that Do we think about Nick's Wilson Sorry, and Fields? <laughs> In Seattle. Uh, what what wide receivers are on the board? Uh so your next one is Brian Thomas. I love me some BTJ. BTJ's got I, me the pick. I'm, I thought I thought you were going to say something else and change. <laughs> B <laughs> just give me PTJ, please. Um, yeah. it's, just please. Just just tonight. Um but the um, o'clock at night. But the thing is, right, so so basically you're saying at this point, um 
you're going to get someone with the speed, athleticism, and size of Brian Thomas Jr. And what did he put over a thousand yards last year? Um, the double double digit touchdowns. Um, for me, he's easily number four wide receiver in this class, uh, and I think he's got great potential to be a, a number one receiver in it, on it on our team. So yeah, I mean, it's no brainer for me. Shane agrees. So away with the pick. Obviously, we're hitting an hour and a half now, so we'll try and wrap this up as quick as possible. I'll move this up to... So at this point now, we've kind of made the decision that we're not going quarterback. Just out of curiosity, was Penix Jr. on the board? Yes, he would have been. See, that's a conversation. I know we weren't having it, but that's a conversation they're going to have because uh, I think he might go earlier than that. I think he might go in the teens. Um uh, before that pick 23 but if he is there then that is definitely a conversation they're having in the war room so Penix actually went 44 so only three picks before this to watch to uh the raiders again, again. again. Oakland, las vegas yes my bad so can i make a suggestion here for some i alluded to earlier in the show yep Go on. can we um trade back with arizona Give them pick 47 and pick 166 and get off them pick 66 and 71. So 47 and 166, did you say? Yeah, we give them 47 and 166 and request 67 and 71 off them. And they have accepted. All right. All, all the trades, all the trades going on. And it's just, it's two for two, but we're getting. An extra two pick. Well, we're getting that extra pick in that in that top seventy two order. So we kind of we're acquiring that kind of back to back. And if you want there, seventy and seventy five, and you can you could trade one of these if you wanted to and trade back again, or you could use one of them to move back up into the end of the second round if you wanted. I think I think we'll stick and pick now because there's some very very good players on the board. And the one that jumps out to me here is getting your starting safety, Jaden Hicks, out of Washington State. Kyrie's there, Kev. Imagine having good Greeley cornerbacks. We've got Queen. We've got Queen. We have, I know, but we've got yeah, Queen and Mitchell. We've got two more. outside ones. <laughs> it's <at> them all. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, this in a nice way, but I don't really care about this. Don't forget, we've got two more picks coming up any minute now as well. So you never know, Kyrie might be there at 60, uh, 70, or 71. Yeah. Th- like I, said, I don't mean this in a nasty way. But I don't. I don't care about this pick because I'd be happy with. I'd be happy with any of them first three, or Junior Colson. Like Chris Jenkins are coming in off of something. Jaden Hicks comes in off of something. Christian Haynes could come in and offer something, and Junior Colson could as well. So um, if Kev wants Jaden Hicks, he's going to get no arguments from me. Cool. That is the cool. pick. Let's then. get it. Safety, it. Jaden Hicks. <clears throat> So Trice McMillan, Jenkins. There we go. He's still there. He's still there. Look at that. And we've got two picks in a row. So because of that trade then, do we look at making best player available at a position? And do we look at Spencer Rattler now? I don't know. I mean, we've got two picks in the row. The three, the three players that stand out to me the most is Haynes, Colson, and Jalen Wright. So linebacker is obviously a area of need for us in in the terms of depth. I mean, guard is as well, but we do have McKethan and Zudu, who potentially can play there. So is linebacker maybe the? I mean, we've got back to back picks, so technically you could take both. But is linebacker like maybe the the more important one here? Yeah, I mean, I, I think linebacker is probably more of a need than what people give credit for. Uh, and I think a player like Junior Colson could come in and fight straight away for a starting spot. So he, he wouldn't come in as depth. I think he'd come in and, and push for that starting spot. So him versus McFadden in camp. Correct. And let's not forget, McFadden's only going into his third year as well. So it's not like he's got a, a huge amount of experience. To be honest, I take him and Christian Hayes. Christian Hayes. Get them hog mollies in. You happy with that? Shane, or are you going to make the case for Jalen Wright here? I mean, I do, I do like Jalen Wright. I, I really do like him. Um, Does Brandon Dorless throw a spanner in that works? I like me some Brandon Dorless. 
Oh, Blake Corum. Yeah, I, mean, I, I think I think the thing with Christian Ains, I, I think he's probably too good a value for the pick. Um, I mean, the other option you've got, like you say, you've got two back-to-back -back picks here. You could trade back again if you wanted. We're not going to. But like you'd have the option of trading back or you could have the option of trading up into the end of the second round if if someone's falling that you really like. Um, but I think Haynes is probably too good a value to, to pass up here. We don't know what's going to happen with Evan Neal. And we've I mean, he would come in and be your right starting right guard now. And then Illuminor and, and uh, Neil would battle out for the right tackle. Yeah. And the thing, we, 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 if, if any team knows more than us, you know, you, your old line get injuries. Like it's, yeah. it's, it's a case of when, not if. Um, I just think he's too good a value to probably pick pass up here. Yeah, and picking up a potential starting guard in round three is nothing to be sniffed at. Nice. Well, that's uh, another pretty successful three-round mock draft there, lads, don't you think? I think yep. so. I think the manoeuvring was was good. I like that. You get end up with two sort of more premium picks. So there we have it. I mean, A's all round. There we go. And an A plus right there. Um, Joe, so this Joe, is something. If you're listening, Joe. <laughs> so this is something I've noticed board, eh? that TFF are, uh, are doing. That saying that you know we brought drafted Brian Thomas Jr. But Jazan Newton had a higher board position. What? Well, who cares? <laughs> if, if, if he does. Like, like on, a, on a big board, I'd have Johnny Newton higher than Brian Thomas. But you've got a factory need. And yes. What would you say was a bigger need for us than what uh, the ta tackle is? Exactly. Couldn't agree more. All right. Well, uh, boys, that was a lot of fun. Um, apologies for the uh, technical issues in the middle there, but obviously... That's what happens when you go live. These things happen. But, you know, if if you fancy your own... Thanks, Kieran. appreciate it. Poor Shane. I mean, you're the one that stoked the, the fire there, Kieran. So, you know. <laughs> um, <laughs> if you fancy doing your own three-round mock or full giant smock draft, make sure you post it on X. Tag us in it as well because um, we love to see them. And remember, if you want to make it an outrageous one, a la Kev's full seven-round giant smock, where we might as well have picked the entire 2024 draft class from Notre Dame. Then again, maybe tag us in it and the lads will choose a winner um, on draft night with a price to be won for the most outrageous mock draft. So get those in to us. Tag one, tag us in it on X. Don't poke the bear. The, the Shane rage came out then fully. Um, unfortunately, though, well, that is all we've got time for this week. Um, stay tuned to the channel as we'll be back next Thursday at the usual time of 8.30 p.m. That is next Thursday, 8.30 p.m. As we round up all the latest draft news, as we will only be one week away from the big night. Um, plus, it's a full Giants seven-round mock draft for the guys to debate over. So looking forward to that one. Anything else to add before we go, guys? Just a, a really fun episode. Um, you know, all, all of us have been doing mock drafts and posting in the in the group chat. So it was good to finally do what a, like a bit of a combined one, a mini one essentially. We've just been three rounds. Um, you know, looking forward to next week's full round mock. Um, and you know, I, I'm eagerly and waiting to see what's going to get me on the ramp bus next week. Oh, I love it. Yeah, really, really good show, lads. Uh, some great interaction as well from the people listening and watching. Um, yeah, and just like I said, just over two weeks from the draft. Um, look, very, very much looking forward to next week's show. Uh, so, yeah, just bring it on. Yep. And hopefully next week we'll have the final details on prizes and the information on how to enter the raffle for draft night. Um, and, yeah, as much information as we possibly can give you one week before the four of us try and manage a six hour live stream. Yeah, it's not like we haven't done it before. Oh, oh no, we, we haven't. So expect things to go wrong. Expect, um, expect plenty of mistakes, expect technical issues, but you can't knock it until we tried it. And unfortunately it's going to be our first time doing it, but we're, I mean, I don't know about the rest of you, but I'm mega, mega looking forward to the next, uh, in, in two weeks time. So, yeah, I can't believe it's it's so close already, but... Are we, are we going to delight a, um, 
a walk like they do for the NFL draft when the rookies turn up, like showing up, but they're wearing and everything. <laughs> yeah, dripping in all those chains and, you know, put the draft cap on and jersey out, you know. <laughs> if I, I mean, I don't know if we'll be dripping in ice or anything, but, you know, it's uh, we what, can, what, we can what, always... was it a few years ago, Playmaker Clean. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Shane has Uber at the ready. It won't even be an Uber or walk. I, I'll walk. <laughs> You're right. So Steve, Steve, it's going to be carnage. You're right, and you, I'm sure. Um, hopefully, you will join us, Steve, because that carnage is going to be entertainment at its finest. Um, but yeah, lo lots to look forward to over the next couple of weeks. Um, mock drafts coming next week again, and then. The week after that, it's round one, baby. So let's rock and roll. Um, as I said at the top, you can check out all of our social platforms by checking out the the links in the description. Also, our merchandise store at Etsy as well. Give this episode a like and a share on your platform of choice. Don't forget to hit the bell when you subscribe to the channel. Keep your eyes and ears posted on our X page because all these inform all the information on our draft night extravaganza will no doubt be posted on there as and when it comes out. My thanks, as ever, for a fantastic evening. It goes to Shane, to Kev, and to Craig for joining me, to you, the viewers and listeners, for tuning in. We're signing off. Until next time, let's go Giants. Mm -hmm.